Hello and welcome to part 2 of Regular Expressions for the Web Administrator. This is lesson number 11 in a 52 week series on what every web administrator needs to know to be successful in the web space. This is a series on various tools, tricks, and techniques targeted at you, the web administrator. Last week I released the first part of this, but because I wasn't able to cover it all in 10 to 15 minutes, I've broken it into two parts. So today's continues where last week's left off. First though, let me answer a question that came up about re regular expressions. The question was whether regular expressions caused more performance overhead than wildcards or static rules. The answer to that is yes, but don't let that scare you off. The resource that's used for regular expressions is CPU, so don't worry about disk or memory or anything else. And it's really nothing to worry about. Most of us have CPU to spare, and the amount of CPU that it uses is not a lot. So yes, it will use more than static rules, and it will use more than even wildcard rules. Uh, but in most cases it's fine. What you can do is watch for your particular situation to see if it does impact you specifically. And if it doesn't, then no worry at all. And again, don't be scared off by this. I use regular rules all the time on servers with hundreds of megabit per second of traffic, really, and with dozens and dozens of rules, and it's really not a problem. I have heard of people that have had impact from the regular expression rules. It does happen, so do watch for it, but don't be scared off by it. So with that said, let's dive in and pick up where last week's left off. Don't forget, this won't make much sense unless you saw last week's first. Okay, so the next one here is a question mark, stands for optional. So here's a good example. Let's take a look at back to our host, and we're going to go to the test pattern. And remember, if we go to www.contoso.com and test, this is going to work. So now let's actually make this www optional. And what we do is this question mark refers to the character immediately before or this set within the parentheses immediately before. In this case, it's this. So the entire www is optional. So if we test it, it works. If we test without the www, it works. But now if we try admin.contosa.com, it does not work because it either has to be www or exactly contosa.com. So this is where the question mark really comes in handy. And if you want it, of course, you can make that C optional to show that it can work with just a single character as well. So again, contosa.com works. We drop the C, it still works. But of course, if you drop the O, it's not going to work because that's not a conditional character. Okay? So the next is these parentheses that are used to create sections or back references. And you can see we did this here. We can see the parentheses, which is puts the whole www together in one group, www dot actually. And it's also used in the back reference, which I'm going to cover shortly. But you can now see that the parentheses is a special character. Again, remember I had it before here. And you can use it for a section for .net, .org, .biz. See, this is all the ORs. This is all valid. And let's see, oh, let's do a good test here. And you can see you can test it here. So again, look, looking pretty cryptic, isn't it? But it's actually quite understandable when you go through step by step. Okay, so the next one here is our square brackets for a character class. This is kind of fun. Let's switch to something different here. And let's add something else. How about our query string instead? And let's do something like, let's go to our test pattern. And we want ID equals 5 and site equals 6, 7, 8. Okay, and so we want a pattern that matches. Of course, a dot asterisk will catch the whole thing, right? But we want to break this into parts because let's assume later on we want to use some SEO friendly URLs for the search engines. We can use something like ID equals, and right now let's make it exact, and site equals 678. Of course this matches, right? But let's change that 5, and we're going to do a square brackets, and then inside we can do a range. 0-9 gives us a range of numbers. And notice we test, it still keeps working. Okay, and of course that only works for a single character, so if we do, uh, let's do a plus afterwards. It says there has to be at least one, but any number of numbers. So this is going to work for a five, six, you know, we can put a whole bunch of numbers here and it's always going to pass. Okay, and the same here. Let's switch this to, again, six, uh, let's do a zero, dash, nine. And we're going to say it can appear one or more times. And if we test... Notice it still passes. So this is what a range is. Now we can also say, let's in here, let's do 0 9, let's do A Z and capital A dash capital Z, and we test. It's going to allow alphanumeric characters. So we can do A, B, C, D, E, F in here. Notice it passes. But this one, the second side, didn't have it. So we test, 
and OK. Now in this case, we need to make sure that we end with our dollar sign and start with our caret. We want to be more precise. Now notice it will fail because it doesn't accept alphanumeric characters, only numeric. Test again. It will work. OK, I realize I am talking fast. You may need to slow this down. You may need to watch it a couple times. But hopefully this is making sense so far. Now notice you can also put in other special characters, like a dash. OK, so if we add a dash in here now, it will work. And now notice I'm going to change this one before I add it to the bottom part, and it will fail. But we can add an underscore in here, and that makes it a valid character. There we go. So this is what the square parentheses are for. Now you can also use a negate. Now this is interesting, because watch this. If I do, let's say, I'm going to, and the negate is actually a hat character here. Now here's what's odd, is that the whole string starts with a caret. That refers to the beginning of the string. But if a square bracket section starts with the caret, the caret has a whole different meaning. So it's a double meaning there for that one character, and it means negate. So we're going to say any character except an A. So we can't, it won't pass if there's an A in it. And see, this fails. So now let's remove our A, and it works. In the real world, you're going to see something fairly common. For example, any character except an AND sign is fairly common. And you can see anything until you get to an AND will pass. OK, so now we look at this. Now, there's a couple special characters that are really handy. Two of them are slash w and our slash d for for a whole word alphanumeric word. So here we can do here. Let's say any slash w is any alphanumeric character. Now this is not going to work right now because of this dash and underscore. So we'll remove that and hit test, and you can see now it passes. So any alphanumeric character. Now let's enforce this one. So to see, there's two ways to do it. You can do the square bracket zero dash nine, or the equivalent is the backslash d any number of times, and that refers to the digit. So now if I make this ABC, notice the second one has to be a digit, but the first one can be alphanumeric. So that's where our backslash W and our backslash D come in. Again, look at this. Even more cryptic looking, but hopefully it's starting to make more sense. And the last thing I want to cover today is our 11th rule, or bonus rule. Now this is specific to each environment, and this is the back reference. In this case, notice that our URL rewrite we we'll use the curly braces, r colon, and then whichever instance it's referring to. I'll show you this is in a minute. And r is a back reference to the rule, and c is a back reference to a condition. Now this changes with different environments. For example, Visual Studio will use a slash zero or a slash one, the slash number here as well. So it look, does a little bit different. URL rewrite or mod rewrite or JavaScript all use different ways. So you might just need to do a quick Google on the environment you're in and say back reference for your environment and see what the conventions are for it. But for URL rewrite, it's going to be here. So let's try this out. So let's do, uh, let's do an example here. How about this? Let's switch this to our user agent. Let's see here, HTTP. user agent. And we're going to say anything. We don't care what it is. Now, if it's the bottom rule, that's a C. That's our condition. So let's do something here. Let's do a redirect to, now notice it has to start with contosa.com, so let's redirect to something different, which is without the W's, so we don't have an endless loop, slash, and then let's do our condition. So what's going to happen is if we come into www.contosa.com, it's going to redirect to contosa.com, and then it's, I mean, Chris, you wouldn't do this in the real world, it's going to add our user agent, which is a browser information into the query string. Let's try it out. So contosa.com with the W's, enter, and notice here it gives contosa.com, Mozilla 5.0, all the details. And of course if we try this in IE, so we can do something like contosa.com. It does the same thing except that now of course it has information related to Internet Explorer in this error message. Of course, the page doesn't found, isn't found, so that's fine. OK, so this is a back reference to a condition. And we can also do the back reference to the URL up here at the top. And that's done with the R. So we can see here, slash u entered. And let's just do this, r0. 
and whatever we put in the URL. Again, we want to come in first to www.contosa.com and we're going to say subfolder, sub, subfolder. And notice it redirected and says you entered subfolder slash sub, subfolder. So you can see we have a back reference to this here. And finally, let's look at the different parts. Notice I used a zero each time. What does that really mean? Let's take a look here at an example and we're going to say a URL would be sub, well let's try something different. Let's say ID equals 5 and site equals 678. And we're going to hit test. Notice it passes. Okay, let's be the more precise though. Let's actually make the string exactly the same and start to break it into parts. So let's, if we test this, notice it tests exactly, but let's actually put this in parentheses, 678. Notice this, as soon as you put something in parentheses, it creates a new region or a new group. And we see the R0, the first one, it's in order. So a 0 refers to the entire match, and then 1, 2, 3, etc. So actually, let's put our ID in parentheses. And so the first one, the ID is the 5, and then the site is going to be your 678. So then what this allows us to do is break this into parts. And again, let's switch this to any digit one or more times, and let's switch this to any alphanumeric digit one or more times, and test. See, it still passes. Of course, now, if I were to end this, let's start this with a caret and with a dollar sign, and make this an A, it's not going to pass. Make it without the A, it is going to pass. So if we wanted to, in the back reference, we can use an R2, and it's actually going to have a 678 that we can use in our action rule as we redirect. So there we go. I moved through very fast there, probably too fast. I hope that this made sense and that you were able to follow it. And I hope, please give me some feedback. If that was too fast, let me know. And in the future for lessons like this, I might break it into a couple parts rather than trying to speed talk here. So thanks for listening. Hope you have a great day and you'll tune in next week.